Hey there, my name is JJ Reynolds, founder over at Vision Labs, and today we're going to be talking about the do, the data order of operations. Uh, this is something that we have started rolling out to all of our clients in the sense that we need an action plan to say where are we starting, where are we going, and how do we get there again and again and again, and consistently leveling up. Because this is the truth, folks. Technology changes, strategies change, and your data needs to be there to help drive action. I'm gonna show you two things. I'm gonna show you our do, the data order of operations. You can get that at visionlabs.com slash do, and we have an on-demand training right there. I'm gonna show you right now exactly what it is, how it works, how you can apply it to your organization. And then I'm gonna show you the rules of engagement because in order to run through the data order of operations, you have to understand what rules we are going by. So. Without further ado, let me hop into it. And if you would like to follow along, visionlabs.com forward slash D-O-O, do get yourself a copy and you can follow along. Here we are looking at the screen right now. We have uh, these steps in order. There are 10 steps, do not get overwhelmed at all. So what you are trying to do, right? The data order of operations is we wanna do all of these at some level and then level them up again and again and again. The first one is step one, obviously. We have conversion tracking. Uh, we want to track purchases, leads, uh, all the intent uh, signals that you have. You need to track those and send those to your destinations. You need an analytics platform and your ad platform. You need both, okay? Then we can level up into a tag management system. This is where you start centralizing where your data starts from and then where it is going, okay? That is what a tag management system does. You then need your ideal plan. So this is where we focus a lot of our efforts here. We need to strategize what are we trying to do and what is the outcome that we're intending. Uh, we then have behavioral tracking. Okay, so behavioral tracking is something that most people overlook. This is where you can track your scrolls, your clicks, your intention. And then step five, you need to visualize. This is where you take data and you break it down by time, by product, by lead, by source. And we call these your buy questions. Uh, when you really start to uh, dive into your data, you can have a single number. Let's just take it revenue, for example. And you can break that down by date, revenue by product, revenue by source, revenue by lead. Those allow you to dive into it and start taking action. That is step one to five. I'm going to now show you the uh, fillable version. So this is what I want to implore you to do. If you are following along, again, visionlabs.com forward slash do get yourself a copy. I promise you it will get your organization in the right direction. And you can always contact us, fill out a contact form. I'd love to talk with you. We can run you through this one-to-one -one with your organization and get you set up with a plan, build out the plan, and then ultimately execute on the plan every single month. Here is what the fillable version looks like. I want you to come in here and when, once you have your version, I want you to write down the currency. How do you get conversion tracking set up? So I want to write it in. I'm just going to say, hey, uh, we measure thank you pages. What does the better state look like? You can level up infinitely. You might not need to be there right now, but you can always go up a level. Then we have tag management. Okay, so are we using Google Tag Manager? Um, are we using Google Tag Manager server side? Are we using uh, something else like Segment? Are we using another system like Pewik Pro? It does not matter what you use. I do not care whatsoever but are you using some sort of system to uh, operationalize where you're tagging from? Next, we need to have our ideal plan. This is, again, not probably not, not enough space for you to fill everything out here, but what is your current state, right? And this, we have two different frameworks that we wanna run through. We call uh, the first one, the pod, so the purpose of what you're trying to do, the offer of what you're trying to do, and the details of how you are trying to get there. So write in, what are you trying to do? We are running, uh, let's just take for example, a lead uh, launch-based business, right? So maybe you're a, a software or you're a launch-based business. How do you plan to grow? Are you generating leads and then the lead is supposed to go to a webinar and the webinar is supposed to sell? Are you generating uh, trials and being PLG? Are you an agency like we are and we generate leads and free resources that are en that end up into uh, booking a call and talking with us about getting something like this implemented on their behalf. How are you operating uh, your ideal plan? Write that down. What would better look like? Step four, we have built behavioral tracking, right? So how are we currently doing this? Uh, you could do something like, for example, like heat maps, right? Heat maps. 
uh, Microsoft Clarity, we're using uh, VWO, we're using any of these tools to track our behaviors of when the outcome does not exist. Then how are we visualizing things, right? So for example, are we doing something where we have a Looker Studio report maybe, or we're using Tableau, or we're using Power BI. And that is how we're building out our visualizations of our MVPs, right? Is that what we're doing? What would better look like? Is that, Do you have a team that's managing this, that's building out hyper actionable visuals? Or do you just have something that somebody goes into once a week and hopes to find an answer that hits them over the head? Now we can look at funnels, right? This is where we start to dive into things that are more complex. One to five, table stakes, anybody can do that. Now we start looking at things a little bit more holistically and leveling up because we are building on top of the previous steps. So step number six, we have funnels, okay? So this is where we're gonna sequence people, people who did thing A, then thing B, and then thing C. This is where your product analytics starts to coming into play. How are we measuring if our website or our uh, product flows are doing what they're supposed to do? Do we know what better would look like? What questions do we have that we do not have answers to? Our better state, what questions do we have that we do not have answers to at this current moment? Very important to write that down right here. Again, if you, any of this, you're like, oh my goodness, I need to write this down, visionlabs.com forward slash do, D-O-O, and you can grab yourself a copy totally free um, and fill this out with your team. First party data and blended metrics. This is where you start looking at building a data warehouse, storing your information, and then building out reports that are more custom. This, I would say, you do not need until you hit uh, $5 million in revenue, this is where you start looking at your acquisition marketing efficiency ratio. You start building out user journeys and you can start looking at the idea of a CDP, right? How are you tracking all of the behaviors together in one cohesive way so you know what the intention is and the outcome is. Step number eight, we start looking at data sharing, right? We wanna be privacy compliant, so we'll talk to your lawyer first. We wanna always make sure we are within the law, but you can always build out something where you send data back to an advertising platform to build out audience. We have one client of ours doing about $50 million in revenue, um, and they have 11 audiences. We have 11 audiences that we sync to ad platforms to target and build lookalikes and do all those things so their media buying team knows exactly where every user is and what message we need to be talking to them about. That only works if you have the previous steps. You have to have great conversion tracking all the way through to a data warehouse with first party data in order to do this well. Step nine, we start looking at costs. This is something where most marketers, their hair starts standing up, folks. We wanna make sure that you understand how much contribution margin are we actually building towards the business. If you're a B2B SaaS or like a higher ticket thing, you might look at payback periods, right? That's another idea of looking at this. Is how long does it take for we spent this amount of money in January? So say we spent $100,000 in January, how long until we make $100,000 from the efforts that we did that month? This includes ad spend, ideally uh, CapEx, as ideally inventory and cost of goods and people and everything else. This is where we start looking at your costs as a whole. Start simple, again, marketing costs is usually where we'll start, hey, how much do we spend on ads? But there is a whole idea around product fulfillment that we have to think about in the future. And step 10, the holy grail is forecasting. Most people start their forecasts out and say, hey, how are we currently doing this? And then they say, multiply whatever revenue is today times 10%, and that's what we're gonna do next month. That's great and all until you start looking at uh, adding factors. What if we spent more money on ads this month? What if our uh, lifetime value increase and our product is stickier? How do you incorporate what the intention is with what the outcome is expected to be so you can say what we're gonna happen next month? Are you a lead-based business or are you a first-order profitability business? There are different styles of operations, but you should be able to forecast out what will happen next week, next month, and next year. Obviously, the closer you are to that uh, forecast, the easier it will be. So like, it's very easy to forecast what will happen tomorrow. Very hard to forecast what will happen in three years, right? <laughs> That's the whole thing. If you could figure that out, I'm sure the fountain of youth is not far off. Then you can level everything up, right? You put down your current state and your better state and you know where you need to execute against. And you can talk to your entire team and say, how do we orchestrate this together? This might be more than one person. This might be a team. This might be 10 people, it might be five people, it might be two people. 
I hope this made sense, and I really do implore you to go and download a copy. We have two different versions. We have the fillable version, and we have the uh, high-fidelity filled-out version. Uh, you also will get a training over at visionlabs.com forward slash do, D-O-O, and get uh, behind that. And if you have any questions at all, hit reply. Our support team will be there to help, and you can ask questions about this. We are super excited to share this publicly. Uh, because this is where the sausage is made and how the sausage is made. If you can do this again and again and again and better and better and better, you end up with something that your competition will never know what hit them. If you, we can help at all, visionlabs.com forward slash a contact and you can uh, fill out a contact form. We might be able to help implement with this with you or run through an audit with you to help you understand what you need to do next.